Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and alternative homes. In today's video, we're gonna meet Richard and Cassie, who traded their city apartment for a tiny home in the country. This plant-filled tiny home was custom designed and built by Richard and Cassie themselves, and there are so many personal and clever elements inside. and they have a ton of knowledge to share with you. We toured a lot of tiny homes before we built ours and that was something that was really important to us was not feeling like we were sleeping in a coffin. <laughs> and if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time I publish a new tour. I'm Cassie. And I'm Richard. And we're excited to show you our home, The Duchess. Before we moved into our house, we lived in an apartment. We really wanted to get out of the city. We sat and looked at our apartment and how much empty space was in it and just went, why are we paying for this? We can be better than this. We can do things differently and make our house fit us instead of trying to fit ourselves into a house that already exists. So we decided to go with a 30 foot long trailer. It's fairly on the larger end of some tiny homes, but this was gonna be our permanent residence, and it was just the size that was able to accommodate not only us two living in the home, but our three dogs and two cats. <laughs> We started the build process. We moved into a fifth wheel on her dad's property, and we literally just kind of set up shop and had our trailer next to the fifth wheel and just started building uh, every minute extra time we had. It was an incredible experience and took a lot of hard work and sweat and <laughs> tears to get that done. We have been living in our tiny house for about a year and a half now. One of the beautiful things about tiny homes is the ability to really create this space that's gonna be comfortable for you. Moving into a tiny home feels a bit like a caterpillar making its cocoon. It's special to you and it's really going to be a place for you to grow into the best version of yourself. All right, here we are on the outside of our home, the Duchess. One of the big things you'll see immediately is the really teal color that we put on the exterior and it just kind of brightens everything up and it gives it a really cool look with the cedar shake that we did below. It's called Fancy Cuts. It kind of gives that really cool like dragon scales to the home. This is built on an Iron Eagle trailer. It's 30 feet long by eight foot wide. Our home is actually around 14 foot tall, so it's oversized. We installed 15 windows in the home. We kind of made that a really big priority to open up the inside and add a lot of natural light coming in. They're mostly all functioning, so we can open them up when it gets warm, we want fresh air. So that was really good about, you know, adding that many windows in this house. Another thing we love is our cedar deck that we installed. It adds amazing amount of useful space outside because we love just hanging out out here in nature and just taking in fresh air. Let's head around back and I'll show you the utility closet. So here we are at the water closet or our utility closet. We framed this out just to store our hot water heater and uh, some of our other filters. Kind of give you a look from the inside. We used a Renai tankless water heater. It's an on-demand water heater. And it allows us to use multiple uh, fixtures at once and it keeps up with that you know, uh, seven, eight gallon per minute demand. So that's really great. So here we have a two-stage water filter. It goes through a five micron filter into a carbon filter. And this helps sediment not get back into the water heater and also cleaning the water into, you know, being able to drink it.
Well, welcome to the inside of our tiny home. We went with a really open layout just to let it breathe in here. And that's why we also added all these gorgeous plants up top. We have a solid two dozen of them. Maybe we could use a couple more. I don't know, you tell us. They just bring a lot of life to the space and a lot of color. We just really enjoy nature. And you know, in the darker winter months, it's nice to have something inviting inside that reminds you of being able to go outdoors. So one of the main features of our home is our kitchen. It's 13 feet long. And that just allowed us to get everything that we wanted in here because it's such an important space for us. We went with a lot of cabinets. We actually did need to maximize our storage space. And that's why we didn't really go with any floating shelves and we just kind of went across the board. The color of the cabinets matches our outside, so it brings some of that body color from the exterior into the interior. I think it just goes well overall with this black walnut countertops as well. This black walnut is a really good surface. It is spindy, but the warmth that it brings into the house, it, we really enjoyed, so we kind of splurged on this item. It's finished with a organic product, so it's all food grade. It just makes it for a durable surface. We were really particular about what kind of stove we wanted because we wanted it to be tiny but mighty, basically. So we did go kind of big on that, but not giant. I think the most heavily used thing in our house might just be this teapot. We always have something going, either coffee, tea. It definitely sees a lot of use and it was a very thoughtful gift from my parents. So one of the things we love about our kitchen is this 30 inch farmhouse sink. It's really deep. It's a lot wider than you typically see in a tiny home, going from a 24 to a 30. A great addition that we are very happy to have. And obviously one of the big things in a tiny home is storage. So one cool thing for a utensil drawer is adding a slide to the drawer box and it kind of adds a double layer here. And so you can have all your utensils up top and then more utensils below, all within the same drawer. So it adds a really cool functionality to it. And even behind the cabinet doors, you can have pullouts that can store all your cans neatly. So it's a much more usable space and easy to operate. One of my favorite is here in the spice rack cabinet. We're able to, uh, you know, easily pull out some slides and just get to the spices we need. It's super handy. So here on the opposite side of the kitchen is the stairs. There's one thing that is just kind of a little pet peeve of ours is the look of most fridges. What we did in our design process was stick it into the stairs, which allowed it to kind of be tucked away. A really big benefit of that was adding this top step, which is a lot wider than individual treads. It feels a lot more safe getting in and out of this loft with this bigger step. The stairs have quite a bit of storage. That's where a lot of our storage is on this side of the house. The bottom row are stores shoes. We have some tea drawers here in the uh, little ones, as well just more storage behind these doors. All right, we can move back into our closet area. The tough thing in tiny homes is where do you store all of your wardrobe and all of your laundry? For this reason, we built out quite a big space for that and dedicated this to kind of a, a his and hers kind of split, which is great for me and my wife. You know, she has plenty of area. This is three foot wide of an area to hang your clothes as well as on the other side. And then we also have divided drawers here. So four drawers of, for each. Here on this left side is a all-in-one washer dryer. It is an LG 4.2 cubic foot. It's fairly large. The all-in-one washer dryer is great to have. It is more compact than having a, a double. The drying capabilities, you kind of have to learn and live with. It takes a lot longer than a standard dryer. So just know going into it that this is gonna be kind of a uh, learning curve to you know live with the all-in-one. But at the end of the day, I mean, it does what it needs and, and it's great to have in the house. All right, let's check out the bathroom. First things first, our composting toilet. We went with a nature's head. We find it really functional and it's enabled us to be able to be a little more flexible with parking so we don't have to have sewer hookups. Those aren't always available. We really like the warm tones of copper so you'll see that that's what we used 
pretty much throughout the house on all of our fixtures, particularly on our fabulous sink here. We found this as a Craigslist find, so we were really excited about that. And that is actually, I think, the first thing that we bought for the house and we stuck with it, so obviously it was a good choice. One of the probably flashiest things in our house is going to be our fabulous five foot shower. We worked to find a large format tile that would be closely colored to our really teal that you see throughout the rest of the house. We switched things up in the shower pan on the floor there to a hexagon tile. It feels pretty good on your feetsies while you're in there. And one big functional thing that you can't really see but has made a huge difference in our shower staying put together is using an epoxy grout instead of a more traditional grout. This enabled us to move our house without having any cracks in our grout or our tile. It's a lot more flexible than a standard grout with just as much hold. So we think that really made the difference. We also did this whole custom a shower curtain system up here that we made out of basic plumbing supplies and we designed that and fitted it all together. We think it came out really great and it's really functional. Welcome to the office. This is a really great space. We originally designed this to be an additional set of stairs to go to our storage loft. After all of that, we decided we hated it. So I work from home uh, all five days of the week and I really appreciate this ergonomically designed workstation, my fun little yoga ball under here to keep me busy. The first main focal point of our living room is our beautiful bookshelf. We currently have all of our books color coordinated. We're not weird. This was specifically designed with our existing books in mind, so you'll notice that it comes really close on top of them because we wanted everything to fit and fit nicely. Down below this, you'll see our fireplace. This is propane operated and it is off grid, which is really nice. It's just got a little battery that runs the ignition, so if the power is out, we can still stay nice and toasty warm. All of our little critters like hanging out with us on the sofa. We made it as big as we possibly could so that there was room for all of us. We custom made the boxes underneath of the sofa as well as the cushions themselves. And we really like the Bay Area over here. It just really opens things up and brings the outdoors in and it gives us a really beautiful view. Two more things that I'd love to show you while we are here. First off, we've got my piano up on the wall here in the place of honor. Makes it nice and accessible, so I actually practice on it, so I'm glad to have it there. And then secondly, you will see our in-house surround sound up top here. It's really great if we're wanting to watch a movie, if we're jamming on something, having a cleaning party and just kind of want to have something to get down to while we're getting our chores done. This is our dining area. This is a solid slab of local black walnut that we shaped down ourselves. And we spent a lot of time here. Then this is where we sit down to actually have our meals. In addition to that, we're in a really great spot for wildlife. So we have some hummingbird feeders and other types of bird feeders out front along with our pollinator garden. And we just like to sit here and kind of observe what's going on outside. I think the most sparkly thing you will find in our house is our ceiling fan. And that was our one little over the top thing that we decided to add. The airflow is really important. So we were gonna do a ceiling fan no matter what. But when we spotted this guy on Craigslist, we had to have it. All right, let's head up to the bedroom. The first thing you're gonna notice as soon as you get up here is our amazing skylight. You can see I am able to sit up comfortably and Richard is also able to do that at his much more significant five foot 11. So it was really important to us to have this headspace. And you'll notice all the windows too and it just makes it feel really open. We toured a lot of tiny homes before we built ours and that was something that was really important to us was not feeling like we were sleeping in a coffin. <laughs> We sleep in a full-size bed. We have only ever had that size, so we didn't feel like we were losing anything by keeping that up here. You will see over in the corner that Richard has quite the substantial collection of bolo ties. We found those in a variety of different places, but it's kind of like a fun adventure hunting for them wherever we go. 
since you know we needed more space for plants. We have this great half wall over here, so we have four more plants on top of that. It also provides a great opportunity for storage, and on the off chance that somebody wants to hang out and spend the night, it also gives us a measure of privacy as well. We are beyond excited to have the parking spot that we have right now. We got lucky through a friend of a friend basically who was looking for someone to rent an RV spot outside of Portland. So we're pretty conveniently located to things. And so that was definitely a blessing for us. Welcome to our garden. This is a really big difference for us this year. We started out probably three years ago with little herbs in our apartment window and it feels like we've come a really long way from there. We have a lot of varieties of things in here because we wanted to do a lot of food preservation this year, have a lot of options for fresh foods throughout the growing season. So you'll see that we've got a lot of lettuces. We have plants that help our pollinators so they want to come visit our garden and help things grow successfully and we dedicated a whole row to pumpkin. We really want to get on board with fall this year and do some different fun recipes with that. Gardening is one of our favorite pastimes. It just really allows us to get to enjoy living tiny. took about two years for us to build and we very much perfected the process and the materials and all the important things that went into this. That's what pushed us to start our own business and make this house our flagship model. So we will be putting into production replicas of our house so that anybody can buy one. Something that's really unique about us and our company is that we are folks that live tiny and build tiny. So we know how important the process is when you're designing your home to find out what matters to you. We take a look at what things make your life your life so that we can make your home your home. We're able to solve societal issues with lack of affordable, obtainable, and available housing. And we're so grateful that we can really just make a difference in our communities. Thanks for watching this week's video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or creative home tour.